Hello, and welcome to this course with Groove 3. This series is all about how to use the Softube Model 80 synthesizer. The Model 80 is a six voice polyphonic synthesizer based on a sequential Prophet 5. There are several different revisions of the original hardware version of the synthesizer. This one is based on some of the later revisions, the ones that were released in 1980, which have this preset management system available on the bottom. This synth is really great for a very wide variety of different sounds. One of my favorite things about the Softube version of the synth, this VST emulation that we're working with here, which by the way comes in all the other major plugin formats as well, is that it doesn't have any external hardware effects that aren't included on the original hardware version of this. So at first that may sound a little bit like a disadvantage, but it's actually super nice because then all the original presets have the exact same sound that they have on the hardware. And it's also really nice because then you can just use all your favorite effects, so all your favorite delays or chorus units. You can bake those into your patches to create some really unique sounds super quickly. You can scroll through the presets, find a keys patch that's similar to what you're going for, quickly tweak everything, and then apply your own effects to get the style of sound that you're going for. So I find from a workflow perspective, it actually behaves a lot more like the actual analog synthesizers. That's some of the workflow things that I really enjoy about analog because of the way that they have it all designed. And on top of that, it also sounds super authentic and has a really nice, rich analog tone to it. This course will be an explained series on the synthesizer device, diving into each of the different parts of the synth, showing you how they all work and then how they all relate together. This course is designed for people who already know a little bit about how synthesizers work and basic synthesizer terminology. So if you're completely new, I'd recommend checking out some of the other beginner synthesizer courses on Groothy's website before checking this course out. So that way you can go ahead and come back after learning the basics. So as I said previously, these synths are really great for just about any style of production, much like the Model 84 from Softube, which is an emulation of the Juno 106. It can sound super vintage in 80s, or it can sound really modern depending how you program it, and also how you layer effects onto the synth patch. I think specifically because of the way this synth is set up with the style of filters, and then kind of the variations between these different oscillators and how you can layer everything together, I think this one actually sounds a lot more modern than things like Juno 106 or Juno 60, so it's actually a very flexible synth that you hear all over a lot of modern records as well. Because of this simple architecture, it's also really great for writing sessions, so you can quickly find a sound, use a preset, tweak everything, get something going, and then just focus on writing your song, rather than really diving in and tweaking all the individual parts to get something that sounds good. So these are really nice for writing sessions, just keeps the creative flow going so that way you can really focus on just writing your song. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into some of the controls here. We have this main interface with this keyboard along the bottom. And the first control that I want to talk about is going to be this resize of the interface. Down here on the bottom, I can click on this and go ahead and scale that up if I want a larger interface to work with. Or if I'm on a really big screen that's super high resolution, I can actually make this really small. Uh, and obviously this is way too small for our purposes here. But this is nice because then if you have a really large screen, you can have like a delay or reverb effect over here and edit everything all together depending on how you like to work on it. But let's make that nice and big just so it's easy to see all the different parts of everything. The next controls that we have are gonna be these controls along the top. We have an undo and redo function. So let's say I make a change inside of my synthesizer. Let's say I made a cutoff change. I played my patch and I didn't like that change I just made. I can go ahead and undo that by hitting this undo button. And it's gonna undo it to the previous state or I can hit this redo and I could cycle between both of those. So this is super helpful because sometimes depending on how your DAW is set up, by hitting either Command or Control Z to undo or using this file menu up here, sometimes you can actually undo the creation of this device. It just depends on how your uh, DAW is coded. Most of them now usually tend to work with undo functions inside of synthesizers, but sometimes you can have issues, so I would recommend using these, so that way you don't accidentally undo something else inside your DAW rather than undoing the change that you made to the synthesizer. Then we have this MIDI CC button. If I click on this, this gives me the option to go ahead and map MIDI CC data. So here at the bottom, we have these unlink options. These let us see exactly what's currently mapped by default. If I wanted to map something else besides the pitch band or modulation wheel, which are down here at the bottom, let's say, for example, I wanted to map this cutoff to a uh, external MIDI CC. So I'm trying to modulate this inside of my DAW with an automation, or I want to map it to like a knob or slider on my keyboard. All I'd have to do is hit this to enter the MIDI CC linking mode, click at the parameter that we'd like to move, move that parameter on my device, and then we're going to go ahead and be linked up. Uh, but for us, we don't need to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and hit exit. But it's nice to know that that is an available feature. You can also load or save those files if you create a custom mapping, which, for example, like in a live show, would actually be super helpful. Let's say you're using the cutoff a lot and moving around these oscillators with some sliders or knobs on your keyboard. You can go ahead and save that file, and you can recall that at any time. Then we have the option settings right here. 
So if we click on this, it gives us a couple of different options for configuring everything. First of which is going to be this use tooltips and all soft two plugins. I went ahead and turned this off, but when you're starting out, it may be helpful to have this turned on. I just didn't want a bunch of pop-ups letting me know more information about these because we're going to go ahead and dive into each of those on their own. But if you'd like to have those, you can go ahead and turn those on. But for these videos, I'm going to have that turned off just so we don't have a bunch of pop-ups. You can also change how those are opened. So by clicking on everything or different options on this drop-down. And then you also have the option to configure your window size. I'm actually going to save the slightly larger one as my default. So then now every single time I open up this device, it's going to have this slightly larger window size. That way it's a little bit easier to see everything that we're working on. If you'd like to reset that to its factory default, which is going to be that smaller size, you can click on that and resize it. But for us, we're going to go ahead and put that back to the slightly larger size. Save as default. And now it's saved into our settings. The next one is going to be the option to either enable or disable the metal API graphics. And I find usually just leave this on by default. It depends on your hardware configuration on your computer, depending on what graphics cards you have and what operating system you're on. Basically, if you're having problems with the graphics and there's some sort of render issue or you're getting really big CPU spikes or something, I would go ahead and just turn this off to see if it helps or improves everything. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this on. And then we also have this show value display which we do want on by default because then if we go ahead and close this out and I was to hover over, let's say this oscillator control right here, we look at this section right here, it says level 10, letting me know exactly the value that I have selected for this. So that can be helpful, especially if you're following along with the course. And then that is all of those settings. Other option here is going to be this about for the SoftTube Model 80 synthesizer. This will give you some of your license information and then also the ability to access the manual. I won't click on that so we don't show my license key but that is where that is located. Other than that, we have a couple of different options here on this preset browser menu, enable us to quickly load and change around the various different presets that we're using. So the first one is just gonna be this dropdown. This gives us a couple of different presets here that are kind of our main presets. We could scroll through them by just scrolling through this section here. And the nice part, they actually included all the original preset banks from this device, which is super nice. But let's say, for example, I wanted to load in this low strings preset, play that back. Then I could use these different arrows here to load the next one or to scroll between them. So it's kind of nice if you're just trying to quickly find something and you don't know exactly what you're going for. It could just be a quick and easy way to find some presets. Also, once you have user presets, they'll show up here along the top. You can add presets. So if you want to add one of the custom presets that we make later on in the course and then load that up and play around with it, you could do so by clicking on this section right here. You could either save, revert changes, or save as. So if I make a custom preset and trying to export it, and send it to someone, or I want to make a sample pack or something, I go ahead and save that right here. And then we have the set current preset as default, which will go ahead and make this our default state. I'm not going to change that, but that can be helpful. We also have reset all values to default. So if we hit that, I'm going to go ahead and change it back. So that's nice. So if we have like a cutoff change, and then I want to change that back to what that preset is, it'll go ahead and revert to that main preset, which actually is a super helpful feature. Also open preset collection if we'd like to see that preset collection in a bit more depth. Then we have kind of our main preset browser, and this is the one that I definitely use the most. So if we open this preset collection, you see we have a lot more options for the various different presets inside of my synth. So first we can go ahead and search by keywords. Let's maybe do keys. See what kind of keys sounds we get. Then we could use these modifiers down here to go ahead and narrow down our selection. So let's maybe go dark keys. So right here it gives me this analog piano. We'll go ahead and click on that and we can play our sound. The nice part about that sound too is it's super dry so we can process it however we would need inside of our production, which is super nice. Then if I want to go back, I can go ahead and delete my modifier here or delete that dark modifier. And then it gives us our main section. The nice part too is if you download any of the expansions that are available on Arturius website, they're also tagged with all these nice tags so it's very quick and easy to find things. Then we have the option to add a preset, save or save as, so the same functions that were available on the drop down menu. We have the option to kind of adjust how tags are, so we can either not have the tags or have the info shown or hid. We have this tile view, so if we'd like to view them this way, we can. And then we also have this kind of add preset menu with a couple of additional editing options. Well, basically, kind of the similar stuff here. The helpful one here is really going to be that import presets. Then there's a little bit of structure on these presets that can be helpful. First, we have that name. We can organize them by name. 
We have some information about the different banks these are part of. So this is letting us know that's part of the factory library. And then we have a rating system, which could be really helpful if you find presets you really like. Let's go back to that like dark keys patch. So let's go keys. And let's go ahead and go to dark. Let's say I really like that patch because that's a really excellent kind of synth piano sound, which I'm a really big fan of. I could go ahead and hit this. And then I could go over here and make that five stars. And then that's going to be helpful because now I know that that is going to be something that I enjoy using and I can go back and find it at any time. Alternatively, you also have the option to adjust the color for your preset. You can see as I click down here, it's going to adjust that color. It gives me a little bit of a description here. It tells me what collection it's a part of. And then there's a bit more information over here. You can also add your own tags. So maybe you have like a favorites tag or you're working on a song and you kind of want to organize everything. You can do so over here. You also have the option to change the preset cover. So there's a lot of different options for organizing everything. The main one that I'd recommend is go through all these and then tag them if you like the sound. So for example, you find something like it's a really great keyboard sound, you can go ahead and tag that. So that way you know you like using that inside your production. So I'm gonna leave that one tagged because I do actually like that keyboard sound. Let me go ahead and close it out. And then that wraps up that section of the presets. The only other thing I wanna cover for now on this device is gonna be this volume control. We'll cover each of these individual sections in their own videos. But this is just kind of helpful for gain staging so that way you don't have to adjust the volume inside of your DAW if you have too much volume being fed into like an effects device or something. If I want to reduce this, go ahead and turn that down. Or if I want to increase it, I can crank it up. So that's just a general control that's really helpful, especially once you start gain staging. Say you're feeding it into a distortion, it's just saturating too much without even overdriving the distortion, you could adjust that here without having to have any kind of gain utility plugin. All right, so that's the first video on presets and some of those kind of global controls and editing options. Hope you enjoyed the video. In the next one, we'll dive into the oscillator section and start talking about the sound generators for my synth.